All right, guys, top five receiver prospects for the Dallas Cowboys. So, first of all, you guys might notice that this is a new camera. Um, well, not really a new camera, but I got a new phone. I want to test out this camera. Just having some fun in the offseason. So, you guys bear with me. Hopefully, the quality comes out cool, and I think that it will. Now, when we talk about this receiver class, married with what the Cowboys need, for me, this is... The, the last waltz, the final waltz, um, the last dance for Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott. And I truthfully believe that getting Dak Prescott some help, um, and that's not to say that Dak shouldn't have played better because I've been consistent. The the 49ers game, I, I still just can't get it out of my head. But you moved on from Kellen Moore. Mike McCarthy's going to call plays. If I'm Mike McCarthy, I'm going out with the bang. And if it's NFC Championship or bust, like that's it. You know, this team has enough. This team is really good. This team is built well. And I think the Cowboys do need to kind of circle the wagon when it comes to receiver. And I got a couple guys here who I really want to discuss. Now, it's important because I do see everybody doing mock drafts. I do see everybody, um, you know, kind of speaking. And it's very, very early. You know what I mean? And, and I want everybody to have these thoughts. But it's very important to do the homework on some of these guys. Like, these are the top five prospects for the Cowboys. Like, who makes sense for the Cowboys? Not my top five in the draft because, obviously, you have guys like Jordan Addison and Quentin Johnson. But the truth is, they'll be off the board before Dallas picks at 26. And another thing is, we have to remember, it's, it's a great thing and it's a bad thing when you're picking at 26. The great thing is, somebody at – They'll probably be you'll you'll probably have a top lineman available guard um esque position group maybe linebacker at twenty six but you're waiting around it's kind of a a crapshoot now good receivers do fall and I would say niche receivers do fall and what this team needs to me is they need a true two outside of CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb is your one. He's your alpha male. You move him all around the formation. You you put him and you, you play him in different spots. You do all these things with CeeDee Lamb. But you need a two who can help this team and who can constantly create separation, who can constantly win. If I'm Mike McCarthy, if I'm Dak Prescott, even if, if I'm Dak and I'm going into meetings and I'm saying, listen, guys, it's going on year eight. Isn't that crazy? It's 2016. Maybe year nine. I don't know. My math's off. It's cool. Whatever the case may have you, let's give me give me some help, y'all. And he's and he listen. You get him a guy, and he comes in, and he helps. And he has a Chris Olave type rookie year. That's all you can ask for. So, I'm gonna just breeze through these names, and I'm not gonna breeze through them because I've actually watched the tape and watched the film. But I'm gonna get through these names, and I got some honorable mentions. All right, my first honorable mention: um, Cedric Tillman, Tennessee receiver, um, big body guy really helps is like a um, a possession receiver now. We have that in Michael Gallup, but I think that Cedric, Cedric Tillman is a little bit more physical. You go turn on the Alabama tape. Him and one of the players that I'm going to talk about just went crazy against Alabama. You watch the Georgia tape. Um, Cedric Tillman showed up against SEC talent. You guys know how I feel about when you're playing against SEC talent. I think that Tillman did a great job, and he's somebody that he didn't quite make the top five, but he's very close. Marvin Mims, I like Mims a lot. Like, I like Mims a whole lot. Um, I just think he's small. And that's going to have to, like, the play strength and the play speed at the NFL level, it's kind of giving me Hollywood Brown vibes, and that kind of scares me. But I really do think that he could play. It's just going to be interesting to see because with this team, you can't guess. Like, you need to know what these guys do well, and you need to be able to plug them in. And so those are my two honorable mentions. Now, number five for me, all right? And I know that he's going to be a draft favorite. And not to mention, there are guys like Tank Dell and Jaden Reed who are killing the Senior Bowl right now. But for me, these are the guys who you watch the film. Because the Senior Bowl and the All-Star Circuit is great. But, like, we need a guy. You know what I mean? So Senior Bowl will help. And they'll help one of the names on his list. But the Senior Bowl, to me, yeah, you need a guy. When If you draft a receiver at 26 and you need a guy with some juice, you need to know who he is right now. Let's roll. The development, cool, but like Mike McCarthy really doesn't have time. So, long-winded answer, here we go. Number five, Zay Flowers. Now, he's very small, but he's twisted up, and he has some Antonio Brown to his game. He's not Antonio Brown, but he has some Antonio Brown to his game. The only thing that worries me about Zay Flowers is this. The size 
And the level of competition that he played in the ACC is just is not going to be like that in the NFL. So hey, can he consistently beat press coverage? Can he play over the middle of the field? He's a great route runner. I like his play strength. I don't love his play strength. But I think that he is somebody who, opposite of CeeDee Lamb, maybe you throw him in a slot. See, because these guys are going to have to win on the edge and inside because of what you do with CeeDee Lamb. And it's like whoever, even with Mike McCarthy calling plays, they're going to have some of the same rudimentary, rudimentary, that might not even be a word. They're going to have some of the same rudimentary value in what they do with CeeDee Lamb and moving him around the formation. So the other guy, your two, your Y, your X, whatever you want to call him, your, 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 your Robin, he's going to have to be able to play different positions. I think that Zay Flowers has the route running ability. I just don't know how well he'll be able to do day one on the edge. I think he'll play in a slot, but on the edge, it's kind of scary for me. All right, number four, Josh Downs. Now, Zay Flowers is going crazy on Twitter right now, and rightfully so. People love him. But Josh Downs, to me, actually plays more above the rim than Zay Flowers. All right? So him and Drake May had a really nice connection, quarterback from UNC, um, really good player. And I think that Downs has a little bit more juice to his game, like a little bit more Odell to his game. Go up, climb the ladder. Now, he's not a big guy either. And that's what scares me. Like, Downs is really only 170. But the way he plays, he plays above the rim. He's physical. Um, not uber physical, but physical enough. And I like Downs. And I think that actually he probably would play better on the outside than Flowers. I could be wrong, but just his ability to high point the ball, um, strong hands, I really like um, um, Josh um, Josh Downs a lot. Now, number three, and, and this is my guy, all right, Rasheed Rice, um, SMU receiver, is he just has it. Like, he, he doesn't separate well, but he separates well enough. He can play on the edge, but he has this great yak ability. I call him a, a poor man C.D. Lamb. You watch the Maryland tape, and I watched that game live. Y'all know I'm from the DMV. And he just kept making play after play. Like, who is 11? Who is this guy? He's showing up at the Senior Bowl. Um, He's doing some nice things now. And one-on-ones, he's not going to wow you. But he's one of those players, as the game goes on, you have to keep tackling him. He is special. To me, Rasheed Rice, if he's sitting there in the second round and let's say you didn't like the value at receiver in the first round. Let's say you go guard my guy Osiris from Florida. Let's say you go guard. All right. If he's staring at you in the second round, we got to have a Rasheed Rice conversation because this guy can really, really play. Um, he just He's another one who plays above the rim. Um, point. And you know, you know what? The high point ability is good, but the point of attack is even better. Like, the way that he blocks, the, he wants to be physical. Like, he's probably a better version of Noah Brown. And I know that name is going to scare a lot of Cowboys fans, but he he's really physical. I really like this player a lot. Rasheed Rice is somebody that, as the process goes on, the 40 time will be interesting. But as the process goes on, keep an eye on Rasheed Rice. All right, guys. Number two, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Ohio State receivers are always going to be up here for me. Number one, they just made him the OC. Brian Hartline is the man. When it comes to having his guys ready to go, Hartline is second to none. They come in the league, they're clean. Look at Chris Olave. Look at all these Ohio, Ohio State receivers who've come in the league and just play clean football. That's what you would need out of a Jackson Smith and Jigba. And I think he has it. Now, what are people going to say? He's not fast. To me... He's fast enough. To me, he separates enough. He's Keenan Allen. At the top of the route, he's going to give you a move, and he's going to separate. Like, that's what he does. He's not going to run away from you and yak. He's not going to be a big yak guy. But he can high point the ball. He has smooth hands. The only issue to me will kind of be the injury situation. But I don't even know if he if he was really hurt or if it's kind of he was milking it or kind of he knew he was going to be a pro. So that's something to keep in mind. But to me, Jackson Smith and Jigba is – the man. Like, he's not Marvin Harrison Jr. good, but he's really good, and I think he will serve as a really good Robin, and he will continue to get better in the league. Like, he comes in pro ready, but I think he will continue to get better in the league, and he can consistently beat a two. I'm going to tell you that now, and you can move him to slot. He He's going to be ready to go day one because of the coaching that he got at Ohio State. Brian Harline, I'm telling you, I swear by him. That's why they made, that's why Ryan Day made him the offensive coordinator, because if not, he was going to lose Harline. So, I really like Jackson Smith and Jigba. That's my number two receiver. 
And number one, you guys are going to hear me say his name throughout the whole draft process. Jalen freaking Hyatt. Sign me up. Okay, so what I'm hearing and what I see is one trick pony. He can only run run route. I don't I don't I don't like this. He can only run one route situation because that's what Dallas needs. They need somebody who can stretch the field. Give me skinny posts. Give me nine. Let City work underneath. I'm cool. Like, he is going to run past a number two corner all game. Can he be pressed? Well, let me ask you this. If you try to jam him and you miss, he's going to run right past you. And the difference between him and guys like Henry Ruggs, even Jalen Waddle, he has better hands than those. He Like, I think that people think of Hyde as a speed guy because they watch that Tennessee film and you see these guys splits when they're in like 3 by one or 2 by one 11 personnel. These guys splits are outside the numbers and they're going super fast. Like, that's what Josh Heupel wanted to do. He wanted to play fast. He wanted to play NASCAR. He didn't want to um, um, overcomplicate things. So somebody hit me on Twitter. They said, well, Fuss, he was schemed open. Uh, no, nah, not really. It wasn't like they were running like some crazy scheme. And it was like, you know, you know, the play call. It was really, they just played faster than everybody. They were on the line quick, call to play. How is going to run right past you? Like that was their offense. But that doesn't mean that I, I say this all the time. Coaching does not stop in the NFL. So you get them, year one, let them just run past defenses, overs, um, quick game, and nine. Year two, year three, he starts to develop into something. Listen, Deshaun Jackson has probably had a what? It seems like he's been in the league since I was in middle school. He's had a, a, a long career just being a deep ball threat. Ted Ginn Jr. had a long career just being a deep ball threat. I'm telling you, this guy, Jalen Hyatt, once he runs that 4-3-5, I'm even hearing he could probably run a 4-2. He's going to fly out boards, but if he doesn't, I know you guys are saying, oh, he's a second round. I've seen him in mocks in the second round. Forget about it. There's no way that Jalen Hyatt is going in the second round. I'm telling you now, I swear by this kid. I would love for the Cowboys to draft Jalen Hyatt. He would be a perfect number two to CeeDee Lamb. This is what this team needs. Listen, and I'm going to leave you with this. And this was my thoughts on how on Hyatt when I watched him. I watched the Alabama game when he went crazy. But really watching him and digging in, if you hated what Christian Watson did to this defense, well, we got a fast defense now. If you hated what Watson did to this defense, then you are going to love Jalen Hyatt. Guys, these are my five receivers who I think fit for the Cowboys, and I ranked them that way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's draft time. This is my time of year. Senior Bowl recap, Senior Bowl practice recap. Um, my first mock post-Senior Bowl will be next week. Um, so you guys get ready for that. It's your boy, Fuss, as always. Thank you all for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Listen, this is the time of the year where the people who really love team building and love the game Y'all stay with me. So make sure y'all stay with me. It's your boy Fuzz. Hopefully this video came out dope too. New camera. Anyway, peace.